Hello, Reading community. Wanted to take this opportunity to uh, share some updates around STEM week and COVID-19 updates, and also highlight and shout out some of the great work happening across our Reading community. So to start, as you may know, uh, last week was STEM week here in Massachusetts. So I'd like to turn it over to uh, our STEM coordinator here in Reading, uh, Ms. Heather Leonard, who's gonna talk a little bit about just the importance of STEM week and also show some visuals of STEM instruction happening across all of our classrooms. Take it away, Ms. Leonard. Thanks, Dr. Milicheski. Last week was the fourth annual Massachusetts STEM Week. During STEM Week, it's a chance for all students to see themselves in STEM. So what is STEM? STEM is an acronym used to group together the academic subjects of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. While it is each of those individual parts, STEM is also a mindset. It's based on teamwork and creating opportunities for students to dig into their curiosity, approach problems, engage with each other and the world around them. STEM fosters creativity, collaboration, divergent thinking, and motivates young people to generate new ideas and technologies. According to the mass.gov website, more than 40% of all employment in Massachusetts revolves around innovation industries. And adjusted for population, Massachusetts as a state has more demand for STEM jobs than almost every other state in our country. With a focus on practice and innovation, STEM education prepares our students for careers that don't exist yet in our ever-changing world by broadening their skills and perspectives. Oh, it, it went down all the way. Thank you, Ms. Leonard, for uh, that overview, and also thank you to all of our RPS teachers for providing our students with excellent uh, STEM opportunities uh, throughout all of our schools. So thank you and happy STEM week. I'd like to shift a little bit to uh, providing uh, a series of, of COVID-19 updates here. So first, uh, in terms of the mask mandate, uh, as you may know and probably saw in the news this week, DESE has extended uh, the mask mandate uh, across the state until January 15th. With that said, it also does include an off-ramp for uh, schools that have uh, over 80% of students who are vaccinated and over 80% of staff who are vaccinated. Uh, and given that RMHS does hit sort of those thresholds, uh, this is something that our school committee has committed to discussing um, to talk through what this looks like here in Reading for us. So again, this is, should be an ongoing conversation uh, within our school committee. Um, I would also like to note that the, the DESE guidance does include that if uh, the mask mandate is lifted at the uh, local level for uh, school communities that have over 80% of student and staff vaccination uh, rate. It also is still required that students and staff who are not vaccinated still are required to wear a mask. So again, a ongoing conversation, but did want to point that out that that is, um, is given that that was in the news this week through DESE. We've had a lot of questions around staff vaccination rates. Uh, we'd like to share that uh, all of our schools have vaccination rates for our staff of over 80% and in many cases uh, over 90% as well. In our communication next week, we'll share more specific data for each school community, but again, did just want to make the community aware that we are over 80% uh, in all cases and over 90% in most cases uh, in our uh, staff vaccination rates. Also like to make the community aware that we had our first two uh, uh, in-school transmission of COVID-19 over the past couple of weeks. While we had hoped that we wouldn't have any in-school transmission throughout the year, uh, we anticipated that at some point uh, this would be something that we were faced with. So obviously we have a lot of mitigation strategies up front to try to prevent in-school transmission and also want the community to know that once there is an in-school transmission, we are working really closely with each of those individual school communities uh, and our facilities departments to make sure that we have appropriate testing, to make sure that we are looking at all other factors at play. So the uh, sanitizing rooms, 
uh, looking at ventilation and other pieces to uh, limit transmission as much as possible in our schools. But again, did want to point out that we had our first uh, two cases at Killam and at Birch of in-school transmission. Also like to provide some updates around testing. So as you know, we have prioritized two forms of testing to start the school year. One, symptomatic testing. Two, our test and stay. Uh, in total, we have had over 1,200 tests across our school uh, with only one of those uh, coming back positive. Um, in addition to the test and stay, we've recently launched uh, pool testing. We started by with uh, three weeks ago by uh, offering this to our staff and some of our high needs programs. Um, two weeks ago, we offered uh, pool testing to all of our staff. And then last week, we opened this up to students uh, on Friday afternoon at, at Killam. Uh, for students across the district to come to Killam for pool testing. This week we want to extend it a little bit by uh, extending the hours to 4.30 p.m. on Friday. Uh, and for those who are planning on participating, it will be really helpful if you can fill out the uh, registration form uh, as that helps us just to be more efficient with our, our labeling and to create a smoother process for everyone involved. So again, that consent form is only required once, but it is helpful to us if each week you fill in that Google Doc, that form that uh, has you to register for the week. So. Thank you to all of those who have participated in pool testing, again, as another layer of mitigation in our schools. And then lastly, in terms of COVID-19 updates, we do are aware that uh, the FDA should be finalizing uh, emergency approval uh, very shortly. Um, we are working with a local pharmacy to help us to be able to offer uh, vaccination clinics here uh, on a school site so families can bring their child for vaccinations um, at a school. Right now, uh, tentatively, it looks like the vaccination clinics will be offered on November 5th and December 3rd at Coolidge. More information on that will come, but did just want to make the community aware that, again, uh, given some of the, uh, the, gui the guidance we anticipate from the FDA around emergency approval of vaccinations for 5 to 12 year olds, we are trying to uh, plan a clinic, vaccination clinic for uh, November 5th and December 3rd for our students and for our staff. I'd like to transition away from the updates into uh, some of the shout outs for our community. Uh, this past uh, week, myself, Dr. Styes, and Dr. Hardy had the opportunity to visit three different school communities uh, for the full day visits. I'd like to quickly highlight some of the things that stuck out to us uh, within each of these three school communities. First, uh, last Tuesday, we were able to visit the Barrows Elementary, uh, and our team noticed such a strong sense of community across the school. Uh, which was reflected also in the views of students, staff, and the families that we met with. We also noticed that instructionally, uh, the staff did a really excellent job of knowing their students and connecting instructional practices uh, to each of the individual needs and interests of their students. So kudos to the Barrow staff for the excellent work happening within the school community. Also last Friday, we had the opportunity to spend the full day at RMHS, and the word that stuck out to our team at RMHS was passion. Uh, our team felt a palpable passion uh, when we spent times in classrooms across the RMHS community. More specifically, we observed staff who are passionate about not only their content area, uh, but also in the passion about ensuring the success of every child in the community, regardless if that child was in their own classroom or not. Similarly, we observed students who are passionate about their own learning and who held themselves to a really high academic standard. So a huge shout out to all of the RMHS staff and students uh, for just that passion that we could sense when we are in, uh, in the school community. And lastly, would also like to give a shout out to the Birch Meadow staff. Uh, earlier this week, we spent a full day at Birch Meadow and our team felt a caring, uh, dedicated and supportive environment uh, while spending time across the schools. So in hallways, uh, classrooms and the cafeteria. And furthermore, our team observed many examples of strong inclusive practices that we felt uh, ensured that every single student uh, with different learning styles and interests had what they needed to be successful. So again, kudos to all the excellent work happening at Birch. I'd like to close with also just a, um, two stories that I think stick uh, that I think reflect a few of the trends that we've noticed across all of our schools. Uh, the first story was earlier this week in an elementary classroom, I heard one student give a compliment to another student about their writing. They said, oh, that was really creative how you added in that detail. So I took a second to say, oh, thank you for that compliment. That was a really nice compliment. Uh, and the student just looked at me and said, well, that's what we always do. Right? And, and I believed her. That is sort of how what they always do. 
And I've seen just many examples of just the, these kind, uh, supportive environments that, are, uh, that students are showing one another, I think make it a great place to learn for our students. So thank you. Uh, I think that story reflects some of the kindness we've seen across our schools. The other example is we've seen students really hold themselves to a high bar uh, for their own learning and demonstrate a lot of enthusiasm and excitement about learning. I was in another elementary school classroom uh, earlier this week and a student uh, very quickly was able to uh, add two uh, two-digit numbers in his head. And I asked, oh, that was really quick. How did you, how did you do that? And he looked back at me and he said, well, I have a really big brain. So I think we've seen many examples of students having big brains across our district and students wanting to grow their brain, right, and develop and become even stronger students. So uh, across all of the different schools, uh, thank you to our students for the kindness you're showing one another and also thank you to our students for showing that uh, genuine passion and interest for growing yourselves and becoming the best students that you can be. We hope everyone had a great week despite the rain, the cold, and the wind. Uh, we hope you have a great weekend. We look forward to seeing everyone next week. Go Rockets!